Six weeks ago, I harvested wood from this cherry tree and a couple of others on my road for grafting onto dwarf rootstock. As you can see, the parent tree is happily blooming, but how have my grafts done? Let's check them out. Three of my grafts have been put in pots and two of them I planted directly in the ground. So let's start with the potted ones. As you can see, there's good leaf growth on all of them. And the middle one here even has some tiny little flower buds. So now we can unwrap this grafting tape and see how it's really grafted underneath. So there's our graft. I hope you can see it. You can see where this top piece, the scion wood, the bit of the tree we're trying to replicate. On this one, I split that in half and then the bottom bit I carved into a shunt and then inserted it in between. There's from another angle. That's bonded really nicely. If I try and take it apart, it doesn't want to come apart. There's a little bit there that has died, but that shouldn't be a problem. Or well, maybe a bit weak. But there's sticky, sticky stuff coming off here. And that's the resin in the tree. I'm a bit worried about that side. But what I'm going to do, rather than re-tape it, is just hold that in place with a clothes peg. So all that peg is going to do is provide some good steady pressure to help seal that it just needed a little bit longer tree number two this is the one that has the miniature flowers on it so i think this is going to be a very successful graft so this one was quite a straightforward graft you can just see the cyan wood going straight down like that and this one going straight up and it's joined very nicely they seem to hold together really well Again, I think I'm going to put a clothes peg on this just to give it that little bit of pressure just for the next couple of weeks, but I'm confident that this graft has taken. On number three here, I've got less sprouting, so less leaf growth, but I have got a little bit of growth from the rootstock, so I'm just going to cut those bits off because I don't want them sprouting and that rootstock cherry growing. I just want the top cherry growing. Looking like a good, strong graft. Again, this was one where I did a double split. So I've got four overlapping pieces, two from the top and two from the bottom. And they look like they've come together really well. I've got a little bit of sap leaking there, but that's healthy, that shouldn't be a problem. It's not the most elegant joint, it's a little lumpy, but I think it's going to hold really well. I'm not even sure this one needs a clothes peg for extra pressure. Out here by the greenhouse I have the other two, the ones that I planted in the ground. There's one here by this lovely white tulip. And it's not quite in full leaf as the others at all. In fact, we're just looking at buds really. And then on the left here, just by this purple tulip, again, again this one, not looking so leafy, but that doesn't mean that the graft hasn't taken. So let's unwrap these ones. Oh, this graft is not looking good i'm not going to finish unwrapping this actually yeah as you can see there's big gaping there maybe the graft length was just too big or i took away too much material i'm going to clip this so that that can stay in pressure and i'm not going to take off the last of that grafting tape there the one on the left here was a total catastrophic failure I took off the tape and it just fell apart entirely. Uh, so I don't know if that's ever gonna take or not, 
but I've just put the clothes clips on it. I might get some electrical tape and re-wrap this one and hopefully, hopefully it will take. Ooh. So that was my first ever attempt tree grafting and actually I don't think it was that bad a result. I would say too successful, too good to moderate and one total failure. <laughs> I hope this has inspired you to have a go at grafting your own cherry trees. Let me know how you get on in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye!